Hola, hola, my Queen Bee Bakers. Now, today I'm going to show you how to put together this champagne uh, bucket, ice bucket, whatever you want to call it, uh, together. Now, you can do this technique with candy apples, chocolate apples, even caramel apples. So, it's really um, easy and it's really fun. I, I actually enjoyed this process. And the champagne itself, I laminated so you can make laminated um, toppers instead of having to use a edible um, print or having to buy an edible print. So you can laminate it or I will show you a little later on how you can, if you don't have a laminator, what you can do. So I thought this class was super fun and you guys keep asking for it. So alrighty, let's get started. All right, so we want to start off with our dipped apple already. So if you haven't already um, learned to make candy apples, chocolate apples, or caramel apples, there's a few classes on the website that you can learn how to dip uh, chocolate apples and candy apples. So you want to have a apple already dipped. Um, don't worry if it's not too smooth. If it's chocolate, you can smooth it out. If it's candy, you're just going to have to get a smoother apple. Um, so if it's chocolate and if you have little bumps like this, that's okay. Just go ahead and smooth it out. So with this technique, it's really um, a simple design, but you kind of have to get your, your we're going to be using gum paste and you can use fondant and or gum paste, but gum case gum a little faster. So just, just keep that in mind. So what we want to do is make sure you start with an apple that is dipped or that is candied or caramel. Put that to the side. I warmed up some gum paste. Now I'm using Daisy gum paste. I really enjoy this gum paste because it's definitely different. It has like a foam spongy feel to it but it dries nice and hard. It's so strange. I don't know how to describe it, but I love it. So any gum paste that you're using, and you're gonna give yourself like half an inch to an inch. So you can go around the apple. Now you can measure this out or you can do it by eye, completely up to you. And then you want to make sure one of the sides is a little flatter. So all I'm doing is making this side flatter like so, so that when you put it on the apple, it's nice and smooth. Now you do need to measure it. So make sure you measure it. You're gonna go around and I would say about right there. I use scissors to get exact measurements and you cut it down like that. Now you obviously do not have to tear it like that but I did for class sake and I'm gonna get some edible glue. You can use chocolate on chocolate um, for the candy apples. Edible glue works best just keep that in mind and I will have the edible glue recipe below in the description box I just want to give it enough edible glue so that it stays on the apple so what you want to do is put it on the apple now I'm just making sure my edges are nice and clean you are going to want to put a little bit on the edge itself because you're going to seal this together make it sticky right here so we don't want it too above or too below the great thing about the edible glue is that you'll have some leeway to maneuver it so right now it looks like it has like a bandana on and it's looking like an emoji 
don't put too much edible glue because it will start slipping down so you see how nice it's pretty seamless right here it's kind of going one with the chocolate apple I wouldn't say seamless but it will look seamless so that's what you want to achieve and if the back is not cooperating just bundle it on top and squeeze it now what you want to do is go in between right here and create a flap and this is where the gum paste is your friend if you're using fondant this may be a little more difficult to create but gum paste is your friend at this moment if it keeps slipping sliding just maneuver it back in place just means you put a little too much edible glue that's okay it will dry up and depending on your apples if they're lopsided if they're bigger if they're smaller there's a lot that goes into this so see that and that's what we're looking for make sure you got a little lip going you see that it's a little curve right here a little indent So that's what you want to do. Don't worry about the seams on the bottom and how they're not uniform. Just worry about creating that bucket effect. And uh, this is a pretty thick, not too thick or too thin, but just the right size. So, all right, so now we're gonna set that aside and I have some mold here now you can use whatever you want you can actually do a strip of fondant and put it on the apple itself but I feel it's easier to use the mold so if you're getting frustrated and you feel like you're not getting a straight strip of fondant and it's just getting on your nerves just go ahead and pull out the molds there's nothing wrong with using molds, but I will show you what I'm talking about by hand. You would just cut out strip and we're going to put it right here. Now, if you have a chain mold, if you have any kind of mold that is as long and straight line, that looks like a chain of some sort will do you good. If you do not, don't worry. Try to cut a semi-straight gum paste line, like so. Stretch out the parts that are a little thicker. This Daisy gum paste is really generous and is your friend at this point. So now what you would want to do is put some rivets in there. You kind of want to space them out about a finger size. And that's why I have my finger right there. You don't want to indent it too much. So use the back side of your knife if you feel like you might cut it and it just ruins it. So go ahead and finish that and go all the way to the end now you can go in between and give it some more rivets in between the other squares just to give it more depth or as my grandma would call it more oomph more oomph all right and we're gonna put some more edible glue or you can use chocolate chocolate just um, dries faster and you have to work faster with chocolate all right so I am working with a yellow chocolate apple yes it's because I'm going to paint it gold so just keep that in mind so we're gonna put that literally in the middle of the apple and the fondant so we want that in between the fondant 
and the apple so that it looks seamless. Now you can go ahead and cut. And there's that. But you can also choose to do a mold like this one or like this one, but do something that is not too chunky or not too big because it will look out of shape and it won't look aesthetically right. All right, let's move on to the next part. All right, now since the apple has set for about five minutes, we are in the clear to start painting. I do use uh, some Rokum and some vodka, super easy. Now you do want a thicker um, mixture when painting because you don't want to get streaks. So, you're going to paint all of it. And even though the lighting doesn't show it, this is a nice, beautiful gold. So we're going to paint it all. We're going to paint this. Make sure you get those ridges. You want all that aesthetics to show. And then go in, paint. And just paint it all. So I'm going to finish painting this and then show you the finished product. All right, I finished painting the whole apple. Now you see that bucket coming together nice and clean. If you feel like you need a second coat, let it dry for a couple minutes and then give it a second coat. But remember, it also depends on how thick your rokum and alcohol um, is. So you're also gonna wanna paint the inside because again, aesthetics. So make sure you go in there with a the brush and get all the white parts. Try not to get the apple as much, but just the white parts of the apple. Yeah, you can kind of see it right there, but pretty much got them. All right, so we let this sit for about five minutes. If you have a fan near you or a fan near the apple, that would be great. Now also choose a paintbrush that is not going to um, lose its hairs because we already know it's the paintbrush hairs that are on the apple, but whomever you're gifting these to don't know. So just keep that in mind. So get a good brush to work with and uh, always wash it and clean it. All right, let's let this sit. So as the apple sits and dries, there are a couple things that you can be doing. You can use the bigger, chunkier uh, crystal sprinkles or sugar uh, crystals and put that in the, uh, the bucket itself as the ice. Or you can um, use my lollipop class if you've already uh, taken my lollipop class and use that sugar mixture, put it on a silicone mat and you will get this. Now, what's awesome is that it looks more realistic and uh, you can cut it to size. Now, I just use my, I love using gadgets, my little flame blower and I heat up the sugar or the candy like so. Now, I'm not trying to melt it, I'm just trying to heat it up so that when I cut it into pieces, it's more easy to cut. Not only does it help me with that, but it also helps me to, um, to crystallize or make it more clear so it looks more like, uh, like ice cubes, not sugar. So you wanna go in there. Now again, you don't have to do this. I just think it looks more aesthetically correct to ice cubes, but to each his own. See, it already looks like ice cubes, look at that. And you can do that with a bigger piece, but just be careful. I mean, it is fun and it is therapeutic. And then you can go in and get these pieces and just, I love using my gadgets, I'm telling you. 
and just go in there, flame it, and it kind of makes it look like a glass slash ice. Now, I do have a recipe below for gelatin um, squares if you want to make those instead of this, but completely up to you. Again, I feel like this is funner. So do what suits you and fits you. You can use the sugar crystals, uh, sprinkles. You can do the lollipop method and you don't have to see how bendable it was. See how awesome. Yes. Um, you don't have to use this method. Uh, you can use the gelatin and, but it won't be as clear because the gelatin does have a yellow tint to it, but you can use that method and I'll have the instructions below. Um, when you are uh, doing the lollipops, you're obviously not going to make lollipops. You could do little beads of the sugar mixture on your silicone mat and let them dry. Pick up the beads and you won't have to cut this like this. But I think this looks more realistic and I like making a mess. So, completely up to you what you want to do. And then, we would put it in the bucket like so even sounds like ice amazing now this will fall apart and I'm doing this on purpose because there's no adhesive nothing's holding it together so you will have to put some edible glue on the sides on the inside see you don't want that to happen that's that's just a nightmare waiting to happen so you don't want that to happen. So you would put some glue, I'm going to get my other apple since it's more dry, in the inside. And you want to be generous with the glue. Put lots of it, like tons, even on the apple. If you have uh, piping gel, you can use piping gel as well. And just maneuver the ice cubes in there, however you want to place them. Or if you want to dump them in there like so. And then put some edible glue on top of that. So you'd put some edible glue there. And then put that on top of that. And that will stick together. So on and so forth. You get the drift. So be creative with it. Have fun with it most of all. And just look at the imaginations that you guys are going to have when putting this together look at that it already looks like a bucket you can add a handle the same way we did this completely up to you i don't think it needs a handle if you were to put the stick in a little crooked you'd be able to hide the stick with the bottle and it would be that way slanted but again completely up to you just giving you some ideas all right, let's move on to the bottle. All right, so you can print any champagne bottle or whatever bottle you want to print out um, from your printer or order edible prints. Um, I feel it's more costly if you do edible prints compared to making your own uh, toppers that are food safe to put into the candy apples. So completely up to you. Size matters. I feel this three and a half inch bottle perfect size perfect three to three and a half inches is perfect size so keep that in mind this one is around two two and a half around there so three three and a half perfect now what i did to this one is i added some cardboard to the back some leftover cardboard um but you would use something that didn't have any drawings or anything um and cut out the piece of paper Add it to a piece of cardboard. We're going to pretend. Now, if you don't have a laminator, get some good, strong, thick tape. Like so. And add it to the front. Like so. So we're going to add that whole tape to the front like so and then we're going to do the same to the back
Now, again, you don't have to add the piece of cardboard. I just did because it was thicker and I felt like it looked better aesthetically. And then just make sure the edges are nice and crisp. And then you're going to go in and cut. You are going to leave a little bit of a lip, a little bit of a clear lip on the edges. Just a little bit. Because that's what's going to hold it together. But no one will be able to tell. It'll look amazing either way. So you're going to cut that out. Remember, a little bit of a clear lip. And you can do these ahead of time so you don't get stuck figuring out what you have to do. And ta-da! There you go. Now, once you're done with that, you don't have to put the ice cubes in first. I like to put the ice cubes in first because it gives it more height for the bottle. But some people like to disguise the bottle in the ice. Completely up to you. You can always put a piece of ice in there like that. Let me zoom out. Now, what you can do to stick it to the back of the stick is just put some... Uh, glue you can use any kind of glue at this point because you're using plastic on wood this is not going to be edible and they will pick it up like this so how fun so if your your stick was sideways your bottle would be sideways like that as well so just keep that in mind for aesthetic reasons so glue it to the back how fun is that Super cute. I really, really liked um, figuring this class out. I love when you guys give me different things to do. So, I hope you guys enjoy making uh, this cute ice bucket, champagne bucket holder bottle. <laughs> Until next time, remember, look in the description box below. And there are new classes going up every week. So, just Stay tuned. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day.